Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Director General, Ambassador Sujan R. Chinoy, I, Shruti Pandale, a fellow here, welcome you all to the Manohar Parikar Institute for Defense Studies and Analyses. Today, under our eminent persons lecture series, we have the honor of having with us His Excellency, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, Head of the High Council of National Reconciliation of Afghanistan, to deliver a special address to us on the future of Afghanistan. We could not have had anyone better to give us a sense of the ongoing reconciliation process in Afghanistan, which is of critical importance for regional peace and prosperity. I deem it an honor to introduce His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Abdullah to you now. His Excellency is currently the Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation of Afghanistan and on his shoulders lie the responsibility to lead, coordinate and manage all efforts and activities relating to Afghanistan's peace and reconciliation processes. Earlier, he served as the Chief Executive Officer of the Unity Government of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan from September 2014 until March 2020. He's also been a candidate in the 2009, 14 and 2019 Afghan presidential elections. At the historic post-Taliban conference held in Bonn, Germany in December 2001, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah was selected as a foreign minister in the interim administration. He served in that position up till 2006. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah broadened Afghanistan's foreign relations and successfully advanced and promoted the new foreign policy agenda. He also has worked in, uh, in the past as a practicing eye surgeon in the late 1990s. And Dr. Abdullah Abdullah speaks Dari, Pashto and English and is in proficient in Arabic and French. We are truly very fortunate, Your Excellency, to have you with us here today. I would now request uh, the Director General, Ambassador Sujan R. Chunoy, to deliver the welcome address. Your Excellency, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, Chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation of Afghanistan, esteemed members of the Afghan delegation, one and all, esteemed members of the Executive Council of the Manohar Parikar Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, and I wish you all a very warm welcome to our institute today. We are very fortunate to have in our midst Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, an eminent statesman from our close and friendly neighbor, Afghanistan. Excellency, we are truly looking forward to your special address this afternoon, especially at a time when the intra-Afghan peace process has reached a very critical juncture. Friends, the lofty goal of building an enduring architecture for peace and progress is no doubt vital for the people of Afghanistan. It is equally vital for all others. An Afghanistan that is secure and at peace with itself is a factor for stability throughout the region. The people of Afghanistan harbor the fervent hope of achieving peace through mutual accommodation of goals and aspirations. It augurs well that the regional and international community is ready to lend a helping hand in accordance with the priorities established by the people of Afghanistan. India, on its part, has reiterated its conviction at the maiden round of the intra-Afghan dialogue that the peace process must be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned, and Afghan-controlled. We have stated before this sentiment, our hope and expectation that it must respect the national sovereignty and territorial integrity of Afghanistan, that it must also preserve the progress made over the past two decades towards building a democratic Islamic Republic in Afghanistan. Equally, the interests of minorities, women, and vulnerable sections of society must be preserved. And the issue of violence across the country and its neighborhood has to be effectively addressed. We in India believe that Afghanistan has a right to forge its own destiny 
and realize its fullest potential. Above all, the peace process brooks no external interference. India, on its part, respects the will of the people of Afghanistan, whatever it is that they choose for themselves. Your Excellency, your visit to India has come at a very opportune moment and you have had good discussions with the leadership of India. Your visit further cements the close bonds that exist between India and Afghanistan and these ties have stood the test of time. India has played an important role as a major development partner of Afghanistan, executing more than 400 projects across 34 provinces. India remains strongly committed to Afghanistan's reconstruction process. Recently, the COVID pandemic has caused global disruptions in trade, travel, tourism, technology, and supply chains. In the prevailing geostrategic atmosphere, both trade and technology are being increasingly weaponized. Multi-alignment is overtaking multilateralism. Yet, one cannot overemphasize the importance of coherent regional cooperation in overcoming the lacuna that is to be seen in global governance systems as well as in national capacities, especially in healthcare. Under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, India has taken proactive steps to reinvigorate the regional and global response through its initiatives in the SARC as well as in the G20. While the world is riveted on the pandemic, it cannot be blind to terrorism, that great scourge that continues to afflict our region. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi said in his recent address to the United Nations General Assembly, terrorism is one of the biggest challenges, not for any single country, but for the entire world and humanity. That is why, as he put it, it is absolutely imperative that the world unites against terrorism and that the world stands as one against terrorism. Your Excellency, the Indian people wish you well as you go about discharging your onerous duty as the Chairman of the High Council of National Reconstruction of Afghanistan. We understand the arduous road to peace will require infinite patience, perseverance, political will, and wise leadership to ensure a successful outcome. In you, we see that reservoir of wisdom that is so necessary to reconcile contradictions in Afghan society and to arrive at a durable consensus. You have amply proved your mettle in your various previous roles as the Minister of Foreign Affairs and as the CEO. Now, as the Chairman of the High Council of National Reconstruction, the hopes and expectations of the people of Afghanistan, as well as those of the regional and international community, rest on your shoulders. As a physician, you have a natural healing touch, and we are confident that you will succeed in fulfilling your noble mission. It is our cherished hope that a sovereign and independent Afghanistan should one day regain its historical importance as a regional hub for trade and connectivity. It is our dream that its economy should one day have the fullest liberty without let or hindrance to connect with markets and supply chains in South Asia, especially with India. With these words, I once again warmly welcome His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Abdullah to our institute. And through your visit, Your Excellency, we hope to deepen our engagement with the strategic community in Afghanistan. I now request Dr. Dr. Abdullah Abdullah to deliver his special address and to share with us his vision of the future of Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Tashakkar. Bismillah rahman rahim Director General, Ambassador Chenoy, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon to all of you. Thank you for inviting us here and I'm delighted to see many friends of Afghanistan faces who have, who have worked with us in the past few decades here today in this gathering. I'm on an official visit, official visit to India and this is the third day of our visit. Already as yourself mentioned 
I had my meetings with His Excellency Prime Minister Narendra Modi, NSA, Mr. Ajit Doval, and other colleagues. And we will have further meetings tomorrow and the day after tomorrow before going back uh, to Afghanistan. Here in New Delhi, in India, uh, with me is my our delegation, uh, my deputy in the High Council for National Reconciliation and senior members of the High Council with me. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, impo it's, it's, it's obvious that uh, being in India, a friendly country, a friend of Afghanistan for forever, uh, I don't have to remind the government or the civil society or the, or the media here that uh, you have supported us. Uh, you, you, you have supported us, especially in the past two decades and also before that. Uh, if I may refer to the past two decades, uh, worth $3 billion of assistances, which all have gone to the service of our people and, and contributed to the well-being of our people uh, in many fields of uh, life. Uh, we are grateful uh, for your support. And equally important is your principled position in support of Afghanistan or the, the, the Afghanistan or the in-state uh, that uh, the people of Afghanistan would like to see materialized. A peaceful country, peaceful within and without, a democratic country, uh, a country which is friend with the neighborhood and beyond uh, and uh, contributes to the uh, prosperity and connectivity in the region and beyond uh, and also preserves the rights of uh, its own citizens, women in particular, uh, minorities, uh, and cherish the values uh, which, uh, which is uh, values for humanity. Uh, liberties, freedoms, rights. Uh, and that's where, what, uh, what has strengthened uh, our bonds of friendship even further. In our journey in the past two decades, uh, many countries have helped us. Uh, many countries have contributed. And many countries have made sacrifices alongside our own people. Uh, and uh, India has been amongst those lead countries in, the, in this regard. Uh, I'm here to say that we have the past of uh, the past for inspiration, but we know that now we have a chance to also look at the future, a future with dividends from peace and stability. I'll get to the negotiations which are uh, underway in Doha and uh, while traveling in the region I have tried to keep myself updated by hour if not more often about what is going on there and it's important. Uh, I, I'm old enough to remember that Afghanistan was uh, peaceful uh, it was, uh, despite the tensions, still we enjoyed a higher degree of connectivity, trade, transit, people-to-people's -people's relation, in all types of exchanges. We might have been on the trail for tourism and tourists, uh, but uh, no one had to worry about terrorism at that time. That changed more than 40 years back uh, when Afghanistan was invaded. And there is this history. We now have a chance to rebuild a new region, deeper ties, and wider connectivity if we can all work towards restoring peace and stability in Afghanistan. As you know, for the first time after 42 years, 
we are looking at the light at the end of the tunnel, the long tunnel of war in Afghanistan. It will not be easy to reach, to reach it, because uh, we have to make sure that uh, it is the right light in the right tunnel. If it is true, then we can expect a more robust counter-terrorism agenda where regional and global cooperation, more investment in areas that are of interest and produce win-win results, more trade and connectivity to boost our economies, economies and more people-to-people -people contacts. To make sure that we are taking all precautions, making sure that we have the Afghan people on board and we consult widely. We want their expectations to be met regarding security, development, human and gender rights. Pluralism and particularly a system, a participatory system while assuring good relations with our friends and region. Like India, Afghanistan is a multi-ethnic, multilingual, pluralistic and heterogeneous society. We need a system that works for all segments of society and can embrace all views and beliefs. We also want to develop and be educated and prosper. Our majority youth and war-affected demand a better future. Like you, we have experienced the painful stress of war and displacement. So like you and many others, around the world, we deserve a better future and better prospects. In 2001-2002, we laid the groundwork for a new Afghanistan in the post-9-11 world. As I mentioned earlier, India was one of the first countries to help us before and after that period and to, stand, to help us stand on our own feet. And we are indebted to your generosity. But the war prevented us from realizing all our potentials. We are paying a very high price for peace. After 19 years, in no military solution in sight, we need to take path of dialogue in negotiations towards a just in inclusive political system. We are counting on your support, your understanding and your continued friendship for a better future between our two nations and our greater, greater region. During my discussions with uh, Indian leadership here, we were energized and re-energized that the leadership here uh, is supportive of the efforts of the people of Afghanistan, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, for achieving peace, dignified, durable, sustainable peace. And the principle of uh, Af the principles that you have uh, laid the foundation of your po foreign policy towards the future of our country, Afghan led. Afghan owned and Afghan controlled is welcomed by our people and by our uh, system. External Affairs Minister His Excellency J. Shankar addressed uh, the inaugural meeting of intra Afghan negotiations in Doha uh, and expressed his support for the efforts of the Afghan people, which we are thankful for that. I mentioned earlier the support that you have rendered towards us in the past 20 years in many ways and before that. Uh, and also, I want to express our uh, gratitude and appreciation uh, for your support uh, in terms of uh, connectivity projects, which are important, not just for Afghanistan, not just for India, not just for Central Asia, but our whole region, South and Central Asia in Afghanistan altogether. Your support for TAPI project, Chabahar, uh, all will help the future of uh, peoples of, of, of our region. 
uh, and uh, coming to uh, to the focus of my uh, mission now as the chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation. Doha has started, talks continues, and uh, personally I would have preferred more speed, more more uh, uh, more pace to the to the talks. But uh, as we all know, that uh, uh, to start talking to one another and facing one another, while we have only we had only faced one another in the battlefield in the past three decades, it's uh, in itself it's 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 a historic uh, occasion. Uh, meanwhile. Uh, as the chair of the council, on behalf of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, I can assure our friends here uh, that we are fully determined and committed for a peaceful settlement. Because, as I mentioned in the, in the inaugural speech in Doha, uh, there is no military solution, there is no winner in a war, and there is no loser in inclusive, peaceful settlement. That's the opportunity in front of us. In our will, both sides' will and determination will be put to test. Uh, we, with the start, prior to the start of negotiations, we released 5,500 Taliban, which were in our prisons, uh, uh, and, and uh, those were charged with, uh, those were people with heavy burden on their shoulders. And uh, that was uh, mm, uh, that helped the start of negotiations. It requires patience. It requires most first and foremost. It requires the intention, the will, and the determination, and the commitment. That is, that is the start of it. And then, in, with the continuation of it, it requires patience. It requires. Uh, flexibility, it requires uh, understanding one another constraints uh, in all of that. Uh, our uh, delegation there is uh, committed to these principles and they have gone there with that spirit uh, and uh, they, con they will continue with that spirit. Uh, and uh, one of the issues uh, which is uh, a cause of concern for our, for our people, it has been a cause of concern is the continuation of the uh, high level of uh, violence. Well, the talks continues. Uh, unfortunately, the violence has not subsided. Uh, that is that is one serious concern for for our people. Uh, hopefully, we will get to some understanding in that regard with the other side, with the with the uh, Taliban, and then the future of the country. Yes, there are a lot of factors involved in the region and beyond uh, international factors. The United States, uh, uh, there, are, there are timetables, there is the elections in the United States which will going to take place. Uh, issues related to that, uh, but uh, at the same time, I don't see that urgency for achieving peaceful settlement more than at any other place than it is amongst the people of Afghanistan who have suffered in the past 40, 42 years, who have missed a lot of opportunities and don't want to miss further opportunities and want to start putting, putting an end to the agony of the nation. That is, that is, that is there. The absolute majority of our people are supportive of peace in the same way that they are committed to the values that they have made sacrifices for. Yes, we will overnight. My ideas or the ideas of our own fellow citizens, those who believe in those common principles, will not, will, will not turn like Taliban ideas or Taliban will not accept the principles that we believe in it and, and way of life 
that we want our people to to have the option for it, uh, they will have their own ideas. And if we could get to a stage where both sides, while maintaining those ideas and hopefully uh, learning and, and see evolutions or a common understanding how to live in peace within one sovereign, independent country, which is, which is not a threat to its own citizens uh, or, 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 or to the neighborhood or any other country, uh, while contesting uh, for materializing our ideas peacefully. Uh, when yourself in your introductory remarks uh, mentioned about rounds of elections in Afghanistan, uh, that in itself serves as, as an example. We have differences. We have, uh, at times, the elections have been challenging. But at the same time, when we claim that it is for the people, for the interests of the people, we should put the interests of the people above the other things. And that in itself, in our, in our modern his, history, uh, that can serve as an example. So that's the, the end state that we want to achieve people with different ideas, sometimes very different. Um, uh, I, I, I will not get into the giving examples of that, but uh, we have seen it, we have experienced that. Uh, living in one territory, under one system, which works for all, at the same time being allowed freely uh, to exercise their rights, uh, including contesting in the elections, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, but only through peaceful means, not through use of violence, not through resorting to terrorist actions or allowing terrorists to take, take advantage of the situation. That is what, what we are aiming for. And uh, for some of our uh, members of the delegation, this was uh, the first time, uh, a few of them, but most of them, had visited India before as well. They are familiar with the values that that uh, uh, that this nation uh, uh, is uh, adher adhering to, uh, adheres to, and uh, with a friendly attitude of your your people and the support that you have given. You mentioned the COVID nineteen, uh, uh, which which uh, hit all of us. Uh, uh, Thanks God that uh, uh, in our in our case, uh, in spite of the fact that we did have fatalities, we did have cases, and we do have cases still, uh, and uh, we are also worried about the second round, second phase, uh, but uh, it didn't hit us as hard as as. Uh, uh, it hit other nations. You, you also, you have also suffered in our sympathies uh, with all those uh, families who have lost their family members uh, as a result of this. But even there, you helped our people, which were stranded here, uh, yeah, because all the flights were uh, were disrupted, and, and the whole thing which came with it. Uh, you were, uh, you were. Uh, uh, you have been helping us, which we are grateful for that. I myself, uh, mentioning about the ties, the uh, uh, one of the programs which is business to business in, uh, uh, is is the passage to prosperity. Uh, in in 2018, I had participated there as chief executive, and then I I made a firm uh, commitment that uh, I'll, I'll participate uh, in the next one, which was December 2019. Uh, perhaps I had not said, inshallah, uh, and it didn't happen. It, but, but the event took place. The, that was like in the midst of our election issues. Uh, so it was not uh, uh, advisable for me to to, to leave the country, but uh, this is the example of uh, of uh, uh, ideals that in early days uh, we were only 
thinking about it, if it could materialize. And a lot of uh, people have benefited from it. The potentials in a peaceful Afghanistan, in a friendly Afghanistan towards its own neighborhood, free of a scourge of terrorism, uh, you can only imagine how, how could that be and would that be. Well, in spite of the continuation of the war, there are huge uh, opportunities for investment, for trade, for commerce, for connectivity, and uh, all of it together. Uh, while uh, thanking you again uh, for uh, inviting us here, uh, I'll move to the easier part of our session, which is Q&A. Uh, provided that uh, the distinguished colleagues will, uh, will, will make it easy for me. But please, thank you. Shall I come there? Thank you, Your Excellency, for a very candid, uh, for your very candid remarks, and of course, very thought-provoking comments and uh, your recognition of India as such a long-standing friend and partner. Now, I request uh, the Director General Ambassador Sujan Archinoy to uh, carry on the session with the Q and A. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah for that uh, very enlightening and thought-provoking address, uh, which uh, leaves us all with uh, uh, deep hope uh, for the future. In fact, it leaves us also with a sense of confidence uh, that the future will be very bright for the people of Afghanistan. And your contributions uh, will be, uh, above all, instrumental in reaching that uh, goal. Uh, friends, uh, we have uh, about uh, 20 to 25 minutes for a Q&A session. And I would uh, request uh, people to uh, give me a show of uh, their hand uh, so that I can call upon you to pose your question. Uh, please uh, introduce yourself uh, in terms of your name uh, or rank or affiliation. Uh, and please keep it confined to the briefest of questions. Uh, please avoid uh, long comments so that we have more time for the distinguished uh, chief guest uh, to address you. I prefer it the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we might call burden sharing. Uh, in the first round, I intend to take uh, three questions. Uh, and uh, the second round will also be three questions. So that will give you enough, uh, so to speak, meat to put on the bones. Uh, I must begin, if you don't mind, with uh, uh, Ambassador Gautam Mukhopadhyay, a former envoy himself uh, to your great country. Uh, and so, Ambassador Mukhopadhyay, I will then turn to Admiral Shekhar Sinha, who is an esteemed member of our Executive Council. Uh, Excellency Dr. Abdullah, uh, wonderful to see you again. Uh, thank you. Oh. Uh, wonderful to see you again, Excellency Dr. Abdullah Abdullah. And thank you for your very warm sentiments expressed towards India today. Uh, let me also join Director General in uh, wishing you a very, and extending you a very, very warm welcome to your second home, uh, and to also, uh, you know, welcome your delegation, many of whom perhaps are coming to India for the first time, uh, you know, and particularly sort of express our uh, confidence uh, in the great and responsible role that has been entrusted on you uh, at this point of time, and we know that you have the maturity and wisdom to be able to, uh, to handle this. Uh, Excellency, of course, you know, through our, uh, your talks with our leadership, as well as the sentiments that have been expressed by uh, Ambassador Chinoy, as well as Ambassador Jain Prasad the other day in an article, you know very well that uh, India fully stands behind all efforts for peace in Afghanistan and wishes the peace process all success. Uh, I, I don't think we have any doubt about that. Uh, and at the back of the mind, of course, uh, people uh, of India, well-wishers of Afghanistan, are also concerned uh, that while the U.S. has decided to pull out, uh, we do not see any, uh, any reduction in support of violence and the safe havens in Pakistan on the part of Pakistan. So uh, there is some concern uh, about how, uh, how this peace process will progress, while one side has withdrawn 
uh, from the battlefield, but another side continues to support the provi uh, provide the support from the back. But I, Excellency, I'm not so concerned about that. I think you said that we would like uh, the questions to be a bit friendly, so I won't ask you delicate questions about the future, which might be a little awkward for you to speak on right now. I would just like to ask a question a little on the past. You know, it has been more than 10 years since the London conference that the international conference, international community, and Afghanistan have made all efforts to uh, achieve a kind of start a peace process. Talking to the Taliban directly through secret channels, talking through the Pakistani government, talking through the Pakistani army. Uh, what is it that has changed now that uh, Pakistan, to some extent, has helped uh, kickstart uh, the US Taliban deal? And now that you're sitting together uh, finally, do you think that there is a, a change in the attitude of Pakistan to the peace process? And is the peace process likely to succeed? And similarly, is there a change in the attitude of the Taliban, just on the basis of what you have been able to discern so far? Uh, and once again, uh, Dr. Abdullah, a warm welcome to India, and we wish the peace process uh, the greatest success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, I will now turn to Admiral Shekhar Sina. Excellency, great to see you again, apart from number of conferences of uh, India Foundation that you have spoken in the past. Uh, thank you very much. That was a very enlightening talk. Um, uh, it, it might surprise you that, you know, being a naval guy, what is he talking about Afghanistan? Uh, but the first time I gave this Chabahar uh, talk was in the Afghan Institute of uh, Strategic Studies uh, in, uh, in, you know, in the Basque pr pr province. Uh, I'm not going to give a very long sort of uh, uh, question, easier one. How do you see this, uh, the present uh, geopolitical changes which are taking place in uh, Iran? Uh, how much impact do you see happening on the Chabahar project and its further uh, connectivity with the other parts of uh, Afghanistan and not only, uh, you know, the Dalaram road? Will there be some more entry into the uh, further up north in through, uh, into the Afghanistan? Or do you see this, the, your business people are, uh, uh, you know, in, encouraged to see this SCZ which has come up in the which is coming up in uh, Chabahar. What is your view on that? Thank you very much, Admiral Sina. I will take one more question uh, before I turn over to our uh, honored guest. Anyone else? Uh, uh, so let me finish this flank first, the left flank. Uh, Dr. Ashok Behuria. Uh, Your, Your Excellency, I'm Ashok Behuria. I work here in IDSA. Uh, I follow events uh, in Afghanistan very closely. A uh, couple of days back, I, uh, we found uh, uh, people like Hekmatiyar and others. They have a lot of misgivings about Indian uh, intentions. And when you plan to reconcile uh, contradic contradictory forces, uh, how do you envision a role for India in the uh, upcoming setup that you have in mind in Kabul? Because we understand that uh, there are elements who have a lot of misunderstandings about the way India is approaching Afghanistan. This is the, my question number one. Number two is, uh, could you please uh, dwell a little on the inter-ethnic uh, relationship uh, within Afghanistan and uh, what implication it has for the reconciliation efforts that you are undertaking at the moment? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Excellency, would you care to address these three questions? Uh, thank you, uh, Ambassador. Good to see you. Uh, you served uh, uh, Afghanistan at a time that uh, situation was slightly different than today. Uh, but uh, uh, like your uh, predecessors and successors, uh, you represented uh, the foreign policy of a friendly country in support of our people, which we are uh, grateful for that. And uh, what has changed and what has not changed? Uh, that was, uh, that has been the topic of my discussions earlier as well when I, uh, when I uh, uh, visited the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Do we believe at all that there is a military solution? 
to their conflict. That's one. Next to that, aren't we already missed a lot of opportunities for our peoples? The answer to the first part is uh, no, there is no military solution. Uh, and uh, if anybody thinks, for example, uh, if, if there is a thinking amongst the Taliban that the United States will withdraw uh, from Afghanistan, which they will eventually, uh, and then they will take advantage of that situation, uh, and then take Afghanistan back to the three decades back, uh, they may be able to take advantage of the situation temporarily. But it will not, they will not be able to impose their rule upon the people of Afghanistan by force. That's a reality. If there is one lesson in our recent history, is that uh, one side cannot impose its own will upon the nation by force, by using force and violence. Uh, the answer to the next question, uh, haven't we missed already? a lot of opportunities in the past. It's, it's, only, it's not just Afghanistan, but our region. Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, we could have uh, uh, reached highs uh, beyond uh, the thing that we could, we could think today uh, had, had it not been for the continuation of the conflict in the war and also terrorist groups taking advantage of that situation in Afghanistan. So when, when it is our common belief that there is no military solution, we should, we should see what, what each side could do in terms of materialize that vision. Uh, and uh, in terms of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, we have taken uh, major steps. I mentioned the example of uh, uh, exchange of prisoners, uh, like some 5,500. Uh, Taliban were exchanged in exchange for uh, nearly a thousand uh, members of our national defense and security forces. That was a major step on behalf of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan. The fact that uh, countries are saying that there is no military solution, the fact that countries are saying that the peace in Afghanistan means peace in their own side, in peace in the region, uh, and uh, I thought. In, as, in my role as the chair of the High National Reconciliation, uh, uh, I should also uh, assure all the countries around Afghanistan that Afghanistan should not be and will not be uh, a country which poses a threat against any of its neighbors or harboring any terrorist group which would be a threat to our own citizen or to the others. Because there is, there, if there is one lesson in the past 30 years or 40 years, the groups which, have, which are resorting to terrorist actions, they will not serve, they have not served any country's legitimate interest and will not serve any country's legitimate interest. At the end of the day, they have their own agenda. They will turn against any country at any time. That lesson is also, also there. So like talking to the, uh, to the leadership in Pakistan, military and civilian, uh, I was encouraged. It was a while since I had not visited uh, Pakistan, and then uh, this was my first visit as the chair of the council. And then uh, uh, we, will, we, will, we will have to work together. Uh, and uh, I have no doubt in my mind that there is a lot at stake in positive way, in positive manner for every country into, into this. So that's uh, as far as I can uh, elaborate in, in regards to, uh, to your uh, 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 question and nevertheless, that we also missed opportunities. Like, like uh, uh, as Afghans, our international partners also made mistakes at times. But today, it's uh, it's uh, those lessons are there to learn from, rather than uh, to get stuck in it and 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 and, and, and move on. So uh, hopefully, we have all learned uh, the right the right uh, lessons. Uh, uh, Mr. Sena, you, you, you referred to uh, the uh, different uh, uh, part of aspect of our uh, situation, which is regional connectivity in Chabahar, and the importance of that. 
uh, we are not uh, uh, we are not oblivious to the challenges which exist around Afghanistan and also in relations between different countries or amongst different countries. We, we are living in this world in this, uh, with these uh, uh, dynamisms uh, which, uh, which keeps changing uh, uh, from time to time, but at time it's, uh, it's also persistent. Uh, and uh, Chabahar is an opportunity uh, for Afghanistan, for the Islamic Republic of Iran, for South Asia, for Central Asia. There is there and beyond that, and uh, but also because of the other factors, which Afghanistan is not a party to that, or part of those factors, uh, it can get affected. Uh, Iran's relations with the rest of the international community, the Islamic Republic of Iran's relations with the rest of the international community, affects those those uh, uh, possibilities and, and potentials. And meanwhile, I I, I have to reiterate that the Islamic Republic of Iran is supportive of the peace process. While they are having their own challenges uh, uh, otherwise, but they are, they are supportive of the uh, peace process. Uh, in, in Dr. Ashok uh, Baharia, uh, misunderstandings uh, uh, will, will exist, will continue to be there, but uh, uh, at the same time, in, in regards to uh, Mr. Hikmet, or I should say one thing. He opted, he opted uh, to settle peacefully through negotiations, direct negotiations, uh, and uh, that part, uh, that uh, decision of his, I have appreciated. Because, uh, like you decide after a while, uh, that, uh, uh, that you don't continue war with war, and find a way to be there. Uh, he has uh, uh, grievances uh, towards the government, uh, the current uh, situation. He has grievances in ideas. Some of them might not change easily. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, uh, my role is to, uh, to work with all those players which have opted for peaceful settlement to, 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 to rally the forces behind the support for the peace process. That's, that's my role. It's not easy. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, complicated. Uh, but uh, there is no other way but to, uh, but, uh, but, to, uh, but to do so. One uh, added uh, point was that uh, is there a change like amongst the Taliban, Taliban attitude? Uh, we, 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 we hope that there is, there is a change. The talks are slow. Uh, uh, time spent uh, was necessary, but perhaps uh, uh, could have been better spent so far. Uh, but we are at the beginning of it. Uh, and then eventually, the people of Afghanistan and, and the whole international community will, uh, will see who is really committed, what has changed, what has not changed. And, and I, 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 uh, I uh, lay my hope uh, in the optimistic uh, uh, way of looking at it, uh, and hopefully uh, this will this will be the case. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I will now invite uh, another round of three questions, uh, hopefully from uh, the right flank. Uh, so, uh, ladies, gentlemen, anyone wishes to? Yes, uh, you, sir, at the back in the back row there. Please introduce yourself, uh, name, affiliation, and then the question. Manana. Baz Mamad Shinwar Ahmed, Afghanistan Military Television, Khabarial. Pukhtana, Dr. Sam Napadi, to go to the Pasima K. Gairi Salima Sali Rawana, the two Luhatsada, the Afghanistan, the Dari Gairi Salim Sali, Marcas Wagarzi. د افغانستان د سولې په تړاو باندې هم د سیمې د هیوادونو د ګوندیو د هیوادونو غلی دلوره مختلف ته سیمې ته تاسو سفرونه پیل شوي دي څو د افغانستان د سولې د پاره د ملي اجماع د پیورتیا لپاره د سیمې د هیوادونو غ توجه جلب کوي همکاري جلب کوي د دغه لیدلوري د موحد کېدو د پاره تاسو تاسو سفرونه څومره مهم دي او تاسو څومره په دغه برخه کې کار کړی چې د سیمې هیوادونو یو د بل نه د افغانستان د سولې پروانه پروسه کې اندیښمن ونه وسیږي دوهمه خبره دا ده چې 
د سولې سره موازي په افغانستان کې جنګ او تاوتریخوالی هم زور اخیسته ده په خپل استاس هر قدم ته د افغانستان د خلکو سترګې دي او هیلې دي او وایي چې د مصالحې علی شورا د افغانستان حکومت د سولې د روانې د روانې پروسې د پیاوړتیا لپاره حالې زلې کوي په داسې حال کې چې ستاسې د قدمونو د اخیست کېدو سره ستاسې د حلو زرو سره جګړه زور اخلي په قطر کې روانې خبرې سیمې ته ستاسې سفرونه د افغان حکومت هڅې د نړیوالو همکاري ولې په روان تاوتریخوالي باندې اثر نه کوي اغېزه نه کوي او مستقیما دغه تاوتریخوالي نه راکمېږي ډېره زیاته مننه Thanks a lot. Um, this is Masudan Saur from Tlor News, Afghanistan. Just I have a question from uh, Abdullah, Abdullah, uh, our, uh, and it's, my question is about the withdrawal of uh, Uh, American forces from Afghanistan. If uh, we heard that uh, uh, today uh, Trump said about uh, that uh, at the end of this year they would withdraw all of their troops, uh, what do you think? It's the time sure. for the withdrawal of sure. the American troops or not? And I'll also request, uh, I saw the hand go up there. Madam Mayhan Saidi, Saidi please. Yes, please. D did you want to ask a question? Thank you. I am Firuza Azizi, um, uh, news reporter in Afghanistan, uh, Radio Azadi. So, uh, oh, all right, I got the name wrong. Please do introduce yourself. Dr. Sifta, I have a question for you. 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 خبره ده او دریس هم معلوم دی د هند او افغان د هند او د پاکستان تر منز هغه ډول چې ټول ته معلومه ده اړیکې ډیر ښې نه دي څه فکر کوئ په اسلام آباد کې تاسو ته سره د افغانستان د سولې اړوند زیاتې ژمنې وسولې چې همکاري به کوي د تاسو سفر له اسلام آباد او وروسته هند ته آیا فکر نه کوئ چې د پاکستان په ژمنو باندې به تاثیر ولري او که داره تو وایی چه لده وروز تا کم به هوادون تا چه تاسو زی لها غور سر مو مخ که لمخ که خبری کردی دی او ده ها غوی نظریات دی تاسو ریده کاتور سر ده افغانستان ده سول یاروان چوم را مهمه دی او چوم را غیز که ولیسی ده افغانستان که ده تاوتری خوالی پای تا منانه تینکیو بری مچ سو دات میکس تری کوششنز تایم بومیتنگ ویل دو ون مور راوند دون وانتو دیسپوینت ده وانز دیتا ستیل لیف Uh, on the uh, uh, before getting to 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 the to, to the last three questions, there was part of the question earlier that what is the inter-ethnic relations uh, of the people of Afghanistan? In the, uh, uh, I mentioned in my introductory remarks that it is multi-ethnic, multilingual, uh, linguistic uh, society, pluralistic system will address. Uh, the, the, the interest of all the people of Afghanistan. But there is one, uh, uh, one uh, constant in the, in the, in the uh, views of the people of Afghanistan, that the people of Afghanistan want a unified Afghanistan. There, there hasn't been at any stage calls for uh, separation or something like that. In, in we, based on our uh, own uh, Uh, socio-economic uh, 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 circumstances and, and the things which ties us together. Uh, at times, there have been divisive politics which has affected the uh, the feelings of the people. Uh, but altogether, it's that territory within that sovereign country that the people of Afghanistan want to live within uh, in peace. And of course. The uh, justice is something that the people of Afghanistan expect, and in the rule of law altogether. Uh, so, the, at times, the uh, the ethnic issue has been exploited uh, uh, in occasions against one another. But uh, my 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 sense is that uh, the people of Afghanistan respect the rights of one another, and we should more work may be may be needed in order to. 
to, to address all the grievances of the past, but that's the, uh, that's the uh, path uh, forward. Uh, in regards to, to the question from our national uh, television, uh, I should say that uh, you can feel free to speak in huh? Pashto and then perhaps tell the rest of us what you might say. The, 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 the question was that, uh, uh, that uh, unhealthy uh, competitions in the region exist. And how do you think that within this sort of uh, unhealthy uh, competition environment, how can Afghanistan find its own way uh, forward? Uh, uh, the سیمه گتا پشه طریقه تر سره که دایشی او تامین که دایشی او دا هم یو درس ده چه موش اخیسته ده موش جامعه سودیت هم نل رو چه ده نور و ملکون و قبل منزیر آبت و پاکل قضاوت بکو اغستاس و ده سوال برابط هم زواب که دایشی خوز موش دا طول حسه داده چه په سوله کې د ټولو ګټه ده او په دوام د جګړه او تاوتیر خواله کې د ټولو زیان موږ په کې ویلو د هیڅ چا په ګټه نه ده او او دا هم موخه ده چې موږ هلې ځلې دا و او دا به یې زه نورو ملکونو ته هم سفرونه لرم په سیمه کې راتلونکی سفر زموږ په ازبکستان کې دا ټول محتوا ده از موش خبری اتری در سول پاک لده او سرنگ هر ملک هر کشور هر دولت که ولیشی چی پده که اخپل مصبت او سالم ونده ترسره کی بوله الخد استاس سوال داو چه لیو خواست خواست خبری اتری روانه دیده بوله خواست خواست تاو تریخوالی زیادی جی دستنگ دول مسائل یو زای تر تر مخت مختزی اولی دا پتاو تریخوالی کی کمک ندار ندار راکلی داز مشیل او او یل دی ما مخیام ول چه از مشیل داده چه یو نتیجه تسر ورسی کو طالبان سره چه د تاو تریخوالی دا حد د افغانستان خلکو ته د منل ور نده خو متاسفانه دغه سه تجربه په نورو مذاکراتو کې مشته یو خو شاید کوشش وکی چه بلاسه شي په میدان د جګړې په میدان کې خو دا د حل لاره نه ده او د افغانستان خلک ته د منل ور نه ده امیدوار یو چې ان شاء الله په دغه هکله مثبت د مثبت تغییر شاید وسو دی ادر کوشن واز ان ریګارډز ټو ټو مای ټریپ ټو پاکستان وچ هاف ټاکت اباوت ایټ ایکستنسیولی about what uh, what I witnessed, uh, whether that that trip will have an impact here or, or, or the trip here will have a reverse impact on the commitment of uh, uh, of the, the other country which I had visited, the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Uh, but Bugen ki peshtaram yadawari kardum ki raabati kishwar ha bayin khudishan barbud ba khud kishwar ha mesha ma khastar raabati دوستانه با همه کشورها هستیم و در این حال از توقع ما است که وضعیت افغانستان و شرایط افغانستان درک شوه ما ضرورت به همکاری همه داریم من فکر نمی کنم که این بخش کار افغانستان که بخش از تمثیل اهداف ملی و منافع ملی ما است این ما بتانیم تابعی که چنو تبصره میشه من روحیه هم در روز هم ندیدم اونا آگاهی داشتن از سفر ما به کشور هند و یک سم روحیه در هم وجود نداره افغانستان و جریانی که در کشور ما هست هر کشور منفی هم متاثر شده میتونه از او و مثبت هم متاثر شده میتونه و ما منافع ملی خود در بهبود روابط بر اساس احترام متقابل با همه 
میدانیم و در امی مسیر کار خواهد کردیم بریف انسر تو دت کوشن واز دت وی پرسو اور نیشنل انٹرسٹ این وی نیڈ better relations with all countries uh, in addressing the challenges that we are faced in our relations with any country and of course it's not our duty to uh, to uh, to to decide for any country for their own relations uh, in between themselves that's not that's not our uh, uh, our position or, or our mission well um, at the same time we have no doubt in our mind that peace in Afghanistan is in the interest of everybody and everybody can help one or another, more, less, but uh, uh, being here uh, in, uh, in, in India, uh, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, before noon, uh, we had a very good meeting, and he said, whatever settlement which is acceptable for the people of Afghanistan, we are supporting. So there is no uh, self-interest. And self-interest is in a peaceful Afghanistan, in a, an Afghanistan which is democratic and respects its own people's rights, at the same time does not harbor any terrorist group. That's the, that's the bottom line. And, and that is what, uh, uh, what uh, uh, we expect from, from countries to, uh, to respect. Session? I hope that satisfied uh, the last uh, batch of questioners. Uh, I will take uh, one round, maybe, perhaps, uh, would you permit uh, one more round of okay. three questions? Yes. Um, we are well, running sir, short of time. And then our, uh, our own, uh, for, for uh, our Afghan uh, journalists, I will have plenty of time to talk <laughs> yes, to of them course. later on <laughs> as well. But so uh, I will then turn to, with your permission, Excellency, I will turn to Ms. Zainab uh, from our institute. Uh, Zainab, the floor is yours. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, my question to you uh, would be, would you consider Taliban, uh, really consider Taliban a non-terrorist group, especially when Taliban consider the dispension a uh, sort of puppet? Uh, do you really expect any constructive outcome uh, that part from of it, your especially, negotiations? Especially, especially that? Your, especially your, your when Taliban consider the dispension, like the group, uh, reconciliation group, kind of a puppet. Uh, so do you really expect any constructive outcome from your negotiations? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Zainab. Um, uh, yes, please. Please, uh, gentlemen there with the red tie, please uh, introduce yourself, your affiliation, and brief question. Mike, please. Mike. Jahan, sir. I'm Colonel Shailendra Singh. Uh, I wish, sir, you could have allowed me to ask this question in Hindi, because uh, probably what the Afghanis spoke, we couldn't understand. But I have a very beautiful background that 99% of the students studying in India, and especially in Delhi, they prefer to speak in Hindi, sir. That's the kind of uh, social affiliation okay, we have question, with your please. country. Question, I'll please. come to the okay. question, sir. Uh, you have, sir, already narrated uh, that how India has contributed towards the development of Afghanistan. But somehow we have missed out on contributing towards this peace talk. I only want to know from you, sir, your view, because Last year, when Hamid Karzai sir was here, he said he wished to see India a leading role in this peace talk. Having uh, now one and a half year gone, what is your opinion on it, sir? That what could have been a better role for India to play? Thank you. I'll take. Uh, I've taken two now. Zainab plus you, uh, Colonel Shailendra. So third one. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'll take four this time. Adil, I'll come to you. Uh, Hi, sir, you there, please. Introduce yourself. Hi, sir. I'm Siddhant from Vion. Uh, one question. How do you see... Vion is a, a news uh, channel. I know. So, uh, how do you see China's role in the entire Afghan peace process? Thank you. That's... Uh, you, you kept your word there. Brief question. Uh, Dr. Adil Rashid from our institute. Uh, sir, he's uh, uh, head of our uh, uh, counter-terrorism, uh, uh, counter-radicalization and terror finance center. E e easy job. <laughs> well, it's, it's easy because it's a newly formed center. Okay. But as the going uh, gets uh, tough, uh, the tough will get going too. Yes. Hopefully, sir. Uh, I just wanted to know, um, uh, it seems that it is a very uh, a neighborhood which Afghanistan has, with the exception of India, where we don't have uh, very good uh, examples of liberalism and democracy. 
uh, around and with the uh, uh, withdrawal of U.S. Uh, presence, there is a sense of uh, a sense of unease that probably uh, liberalism and liberal forces, liberal governments, their uh, presence or their influence in the region once U.S. withdraws would not be that uh, that powerful and probably the disturbed uh, neighborhood would become more influential. So I'm just asking your views on that. Thank you. Over to you, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you. Uh, one uh, uh, question from, or part of one question from earlier, uh, uh, part uh, I may refer to, uh, uh, U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan. Uh, and uh, uh, the, if, if you're referring to today's uh, tweet, this morning's uh, tweet from President Trump, uh, it, it takes a little bit time for us to, to digest it and to, to find out uh, uh, the, to the extent that, it, that it, it refers to the, to the numbers, to the timing, and to, to the whole thing. But there is no doubt that uh, until uh, November, uh, part of that withdrawal will be completed. That's what we are aware of that. And that's what the U.S. military on the ground was making preparations uh, in some number would have been left beyond that. So that is, uh, that is uh, uh, as far as I can say, at this moment. But eventually, we as uh, Afghans, uh, we, should, uh, we should be prepared for any eventuality. Uh, and uh, there is no doubt that there will be uh, consequences by the decisions made by international partners altogether, uh, but it is uh, uh, our responsibility to work together and find a way uh, to live in peace within, within and without. That's, uh, that's, that's the point. That's why we are, we are there uh, in, in Doha to, uh, to pursue the talks. Uh, in regards to the question by Madame Zainab, uh, whether uh, what to call the Taliban, have they, have they committed terrorist actions or not? We all have seen uh, what, what has happened in, in Afghanistan in the past uh, 20 years or before that. Um, what is important for us, what sort of a future we want to have? Uh, a future which, uh, which is uh, peaceful uh, and uh, uh, inclusive peaceful settlement uh, without resorting, anybody resorting to terrorist actions or helping terrorist groups or, or allowing terrorist groups uh, in our soil. That is uh, what, what we are aimed at. Things which have happened in Afghanistan, the suffering of our people as a result of those things are not uh, secret to, uh, to anybody. But uh, we, 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 we are looking uh, forward uh, towards a situation where uh, the people of Afghanistan or the dreams of the people of Afghanistan, which is a peaceful settlement of the situation, is, is uh, uh, materialized. Uh, and uh, once again, uh, if, the, if it happens uh, that, uh, that uh, the United, and it will happen one day, of course, in Afghanistan should be able to stand on its own feet. Uh, but if it is premature, it will, ha it will have uh, its uh, consequences if those other uh, conditions attached uh, to their uh, uh, withdrawal uh, uh, perspective are not met. For example, if, if the terrorist groups like Al Qaeda continue to pose a threat against the people of Afghanistan or ISIS uh, and the others, there will be uh, consequences uh, as a as a re result of that. Uh, but uh, uh, we we uh, we will. Uh, we will do whatever in our hands and uh, as the people of that country uh, to address the challenges that we may face uh, and which, uh, uh, which might be uh, at times uh, very difficult to address, but the nation uh, wants peaceful settlement in Afghanistan free of uh, terror and the rights of its own people uh, preserved and our people have made big sacrifices towards that. Uh, that is what uh, 
uh, what uh, what we desire and what we need to uh, achieve, uh, and uh, not the continuation of the agony of the people uh, forever in in any side who opt for that for the continuation or attributes uh, to the to the continuation of the war but they are taking a huge responsibility but eventually it has there has to be a peaceful settlement i think even the microphone says to us that uh, we are coming uh, towards the end of the our uh, q and a and uh, the role of uh, china china has been supportive of the peaceful efforts altogether uh, uh, and that's as, as, uh, as far as uh, I can say. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, you have given us uh, wise words. You have spoken from uh, the heart. Uh, and you have uh, uh, left uh, everybody with uh, great hope and expectation as to a very stable and bright future for the people of Afghanistan. I also think that you have spoken on behalf of all the people of Afghanistan. And that is uh, a tribute to your sagacity and wisdom. Thank you very much indeed for so patiently taking on uh, all the numerous questions that were addressed to you in the Q&A session. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you, Director General, for moderating that very candid Q&A. Uh, now we quickly proceed to a short presentation ceremony. I request Ambassador Sujan Archunoy to kindly present His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Abdullah with the Institute's memento and a set of our publications. This one is on the honesty, like uh, 13 verses from different poets and, and, and uh, Persian poets uh, from eight centuries back up to the uh, last century uh, on the same subject. So every page is on one subject. And, and, and then uh, I have the original of this, uh, 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 which was a family, part of the family collection, uh, uh, calligraphed, but then I, I, I got it. Uh, published. Uh, it has my name somewhere, but uh, uh, but it's, it's only to uh, to get it translated. But the, that it goes to the calligrapher and to my late uncle who had uh, selected uh, all these uh, poetry. So, uh, and, and uh, there you can see uh, the wisdom uh, 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 in rich uh, ideas. Uh, which is all for for tolerance, uh, for peaceful coexistence, for understanding one another, accepting one another, uh, and, and liking one one another, and, and all that. So that I thought that based on the uh, subject of our discussions, I would leave this one to yourself. And, 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 and this one uh, for you, madam. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Now I take the opportunity uh, to request Major General Bipin Bakshi, the Deputy Director General of our Institute, to kindly deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, Shruti. Your Excellency, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, Ambassador Sujan Archinoi, RDG, distinguished delegates from Afghanistan on the left, our esteemed representatives of the Executive Council, friends from the media from both the countries, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and our uniformed forces of the Indian Armed Forces, the representatives are also here. On behalf of the team of MP IDSA, it is my proud privilege to propose this vote of thanks for this very important occasion, which happens to be our first major international event in the post-COVID world. So we will always remember this great day, sir. At the outset, I would like to express my profound thanks to Your Excellency for a very lucid and comprehensive account of the process of reconciliation being attempted in Afghanistan. As friends of the Afghani peoples, we are watching this entire process with great interest and our best wishes are always with the people of Afghanistan and with you, sir, who have been given this onerous task of moving through a minefield of multiple interests. We are grateful, sir, that you could find time from your busy schedule and honor us with your presence here and to share your thoughts with us. I would like to thank the MEA, but the PI division, uh, who helped to coordinate this particular address, and the HCNR staff who worked with us for the smooth coordination. The Delhi police and other security agencies also deserve a big hand for having ensured the foolproof security for this event despite the very short notice. And they came and swept the institute very fast and uh, made sure everything was done in very good order. I would thank our DG sir who conceptualized this entire event and changing it from a smaller to a, a more involved event which I am sure everyone has enjoyed. I will thank the, 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 the South Asia Center at MPIDSA, Dr. Behuria, who has done the coordination, our Assistant Director, Colonel Agarwal, and his team of the conference cell and the administrative staff, the young team of volunteers who helped to usher people, and last but not the least, the entire participants here who have made it so lively, so interactive, and so successful. So uh, long live the Indo -Af Afghan friendship. As the Dan Khushbaktam. Khali Mamnoon, Shabba Khair. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Jen Bakshi, and thank you so much, Your Excellency, for taking out the time to be here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we have come to the end of the program. Thank you very much for joining us here today and for your participation. May I request you to please remain seated until the delegation from Afghanistan leaves the auditorium. Once again, thank you very much for joining us, and we wish you the best of health. Thank you very much.